Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Penn. I'm a pixel artist animator. I've worked on these games. And today we are going to be making a cute little sci-fi isometric shelter. It will be kind of like this and we will be using Cam's isometric box generator, which you can download for free on itch.io. I'll put the link in the description, whether on YouTube or Patreon, and you can go ahead and download it. So we'll break it down into a few steps. The first one being blocking, and that will just be adding a block with this generator and kind of stacking them like Lego blocks, which is quick, kind of fun to do. And then step two will be kind of figuring out your base colors, which I third step, we will add smaller blocks, kind of more detailed blocks, kind of figure, figuring out kind of how we want to stylize it. And then there will be small details like, you know, the wires, grass and rust and so on. And then we'll, we'll finish it off. Let's begin on a new canvas. We'll start by going 192 by 192. And we're going to add a bunch of layers. Shift N to add layers. And then we're going to delete this palette. We will copy and paste this palette here and I believe this is the background color could be wrong Oop, I was wrong so that's the background the ground and we will just name that ground and we will lock it so we don't alter any anything on that layer and then we will click somewhere in the middle and we'll start messing around with these boxes and to access it if you downloaded it you can just go scripts isometric box a cam and then it brings up this little box generator and it throws some some auto colors i think it just takes it from your palette might not i'm not sure and it will give you default settings so you can see all you have is your colors and the size and then corners which kind of just adds to it i keep it at two pixels and you can see here left is five right is five and ten or height is five or ten sorry all over the place but we can go ahead and turn off the background and we'll just add our first box. And you can see here it makes a layer, calls it cube, and then it has the dim dimensions there. And five by five by five is looks pretty good. It's a little big. So let's try to get it in a 16 by 16 square. I don't think we'll get it perfect, but I think we can get pretty close. So let's go ahead and delete that layer. And let's change this to four. I can get there four by four and let's do eight see if that it's a bit better and I think that's that's close because you can always copy and paste these you'll always kind of go above them so it's kind of like they're smaller than it actually appears but yeah so now we have our initial box and if you have a player like this this dude here you can always grab them for scaling just keep them on scene you can put them on a top layer just kind of have them chilling you can lock it and you can name it player just for reference and then if we go back to our cube layer we have our cube and there's a few ways we can expand this we can just add a new box but that's going to add a new layer which then you'll have to flatten and it's just a couple extra steps so what i like to do is go in that cube layer and i know this is going to be the size of the cube itself four by four by eight and i'm just gonna copy and i'm gonna paste it so it connects like a leg block and then i'm gonna do another one and now we have three and what we can do with this we can move it and we can copy it all and connect them like so and you can add another one and you can connect it like so and you can make it bigger you can make it longer you can make it as many different ways as you want but i think we will keep it fairly small for this tutorial since it's kind of a beginner friendly isometric tutorial so we're gonna keep it three by three and we're gonna copy all that and paste it and then we're just gonna slap it on top and then we'll add another one on top of there and you can see we have this nice cube that's the right size for our hero and it's perfect perfect isometric box and it didn't take long at all so once you have the cube you can go ahead and then add some different sizes so let's try to make something maybe we'll do a height of eight since that seemed fine let's try eight by eight by eight see how that looks and we kind of got this this piece on top on its own layer which is fine we'll keep it on its own layer for now 
but it kind of just looks like a little more big AC unit or something kind of something on top of the building we can keep it there we can change the size we can make it a bit smaller we can go we can try seven by seven and we can delete that one see if we like that that gives us a little more room to play we can even try to make it smaller let's see let's see it's six we can do six or five five might be a bit too small or maybe not that looks good we can even keep it in this top corner and we can mess around with two and we can add it there and then we can try to make some smaller details if we want but for now let's just keep it as so and let's try a skinny but tall one so let's go to 16 and we'll try a two by two it makes a tall little skinny box and we can just place that in position perhaps there and maybe we'll make another one i'll we'll just add a box we can add it here on the side and we'll try to add more actually let's undo let's move this one back so when we add it it just comes on top already and and that looks pretty cool so you got this kind of small shelter home kind of coming together so we can merge all these you can keep them separate it if you want if you want to do some adjustments down the road you definitely can i think we're, i'm gonna flatten them for now and then we're gonna figure out kind of our base color so what how do you want this to look essentially i'm gonna use the paint bucket and i already know i like these kind of rusty kind of colors so i'm gonna go ahead and select those i'm gonna use another script called color shading just to grab some quick colors and i'm just gonna kind of replace some of these and just get the, the base look kind of, or the base colors kind of figured out. And I know I want these to be darker inside. Perhaps these go all the way across. And then maybe just one here with a lighter one. Kind of like that look. And then with this color, you can, you can go ahead and use the eyedropper and grab this and then go get. And it will give you more shades of this. Shades, light, saturation, and even some hues with this color picture our color shading tool which is pretty cool i'm gonna do the same up here and these ones towards the back i'm just gonna keep all that that color and now you're kind of getting more of a color we can turn on the ground to kind of get an idea maybe we'll change these boxes here to a more of a gray kind of look different to the house so let's let's do that then i'm gonna turn off contiguous and then i'm just gonna get the shade shading for that color kind of just mess around with different shades here use a darker one on the side over here and then perhaps a lighter one for this right here and then maybe even lighter on on the edges and then bring this or sorry let's bring this one and now it's starting to look more like a ac unit or some kind of sci-fi technology if you want you can bring it this this one as well which looks pretty cool take this darker shade here and it looks pretty cool maybe we'll add some darker ones to these let's see how that looks and pretty cool so now that we got this flattened layer the colors kind of sorted out we could we could let's do let's make these kind of a box machine we can always change them later on if we feel we need to those are all connected so let's just this here and do these two those ones i think they come so come two out yep come two out there so fill those in oops we'll fill these in and this one in. and then we can do this and fill these two orange ones here and now we kind of have different kind of units set up we can fill these in too looks more like a straight line and this corner one a little bright one we can also put that in if we need or if we want and i think these ones had bright ones as well we'll keep them in and now you kind of have your color sorted out but still kind of looks like it doesn't fit in at all. But let's go to a layer above and we can now start adding kind of like details to it or little things um, by using the isometric box generator or just by hand drawing it. And we will use a little bit of both. But let's go to this orange and kind of get a brighter color and kind of make a line. And it's gonna be one pixel and then one over and one up. We'll kind of keep it like that and I'm just gonna copy this entire line so we know it's the same 
and we're going to paste it over here on the same pixel. So generally with these isometric ones, it's usually a two by two or a two line down over two, two pixels, two pixels, two pixels. So you kind of follow that same format. So now when you use the one, 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 it kind of creates a different look. So, but you still want to make sure when these lines are connecting. So this one up here and then this one as well, it should be two by two by two. So we know we did kind of something funky here. And that could just be the placement of this right here. We could bring it in one and it should be better here and it's not. So you kind of just mess around until, cause you want that placement perfect. And you could do this as well. And then you know kind of this placement is gonna be right there. Then you can kind of delete the pieces and see how that looks. Oops, fill it in now. Oops. And now we have kind of a little sunshade and we can go ahead and add some lines to this side. Now you have this little kind of sunshade and it looks looks decent right now, but we can definitely make it better. So let's add some basic kind of shading to it. I'm gonna use a couple shades darker and I'm just gonna go on the inside here, do the same up here and then just come down basically just to give that orange kind of the edge trim. And now we have this, this nice, oops, kind of dark color in the center. And I'm just gonna follow these guidelines from before and just kind of do the same thing where we get one by one pixel in, in those two lines. And you kind of get these three sections. And we can go even further and split them up by just going in the middle of each of those. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six sections. And it kind of looks uh, a bit different and not so asymmetric, like following the rules so much. And it get, gives a little bit of a twist to it. And that's kind of a great detail to start with. I'm gonna go on to this flatten layer and just kind of actually change this because I'm not a big fan of that orange color going all the way down. We didn't, we forgot to change it earlier, but this looks pretty good. So now we can kind of add some additional smaller boxes to the to this to kind of get a cool little smaller details in it that should be quick. So let's go, let's make this height four by four by two. And we kind of get this really small box and we can just place it kind of wherever we want. And you can go smaller, you can go two by two by three is the smallest we can do. Kind of get another one and even put it down here if we want or on top of these ones, maybe one right here. And then you can go ahead and grab your line tool and we have some sort of antenna and this is where the building kind of really starts to shape itself and we'll just try different kind of designs and patterns here and we'll bring these cubes down to the flatten layer and let's just flatten those as well to keep them together and we can kind of start adding more details we'll kind of make a details layer and we'll make it we'll try it darker color sorry let's make let's just some of these colors make it a little better because this side was a little too dark let's just adjust that a bit and maybe we'll add some color into this maybe some more purple to these generators like so and then perhaps we can try to add some kind of wiring system kind of using the line tool you can kind of just follow follow the guidelines and these ones they don't necessarily need to be perfect, but you want them to align somewhat. But you can you can be more forgiving with them. And we'll add some highlights to it. Maybe we'll try some more here, like so. And then we can also try adding some kind of wires on this side. We'll do the two by two. And they're just kind of sneaking into the front, like so. You can add some wires coming down on this side. Maybe that's too bright. And maybe these ones start to this side. Again, we'll follow the two by two rule until it gets to the end. And that looks pretty cool. Perhaps they come off the side a bit. Let's make this right here. Let's add that. But overall, it's starting to look like a little sci-fi techie house. And we can still add some more things. We can add some light details. Kind of, you can kind of go nuts with these. They really, it's really hard for them to look bad if you just start placing them in spots these can be like some kind of battery cell generator things which look pretty cool 
we can even start some shading just to give a little bit more oops go to the flatten layer just some dark we'll add some dark shadows kind of behind these wires here and one way to do this we could always add a layer and we can go soft light we'll go about 67 percent we can just grab a dark color like like what we're on now and when we apply this color anywhere on the scene it will kind of just blend because it's a layer it's its own layer with a mode soft light it will kind of just blend in and use the the color below as kind of reference and it will come out like a shadow anywhere you go so you don't need to switch up your your colors or anything and that could be easy for doing something like this adding shadows to these and and even this guy up here we can go two by two and then we can come up two by two two by two by two and then you can kind of shoot back down and we'll just go along the edges and we might come and fix this up soon but for now we can just add that but let's go to we'll name this the shadow layer details and we'll name this the main this will be the sunshade little sunshade and what I think I want to do is make a new layer above the main and we'll kind of add we'll kind of add some kind of front thing kind of front entrance or a little doorway and doing that let's do let's follow these oops these uh, guidelines here might be too small but we'll see how it goes we'll kind of just and this is on a another layer so gonna be over top of it so we need to kind of connect everything before we fill it in let's see oh and I miss these here and they're just over top but we can just go ahead and delete that after and then over here that one should be good and it's a bit too small so let's go ahead and just delete one line here this one as well maybe one more and then we can grab this blue color maybe grab a highlight and we'll just kind of make highlights on the side so they look more like a door and then we'll grab a dark color maybe this one here and we'll kind of just fill this all in just to start the kind of inside and now it looks more like a door and we can add just kind of maybe that's too bright we can take this shadow color we can kind of just use that same two pixels line and kind of just fill in that top and now we kind of have this kind of entrance and we can still spice this up by adding some more to it so maybe we can take some of this this orange siding here maybe there's a panel of it coming down like so do the same thing over here perhaps these wires come over a little bit and then we can go to the shadow layer I think we were on this color we can just kind of add some shadows as well fill that in like so and now you kind of have the sunshade blocking it out a bit and then we can go maybe we can merge this the front area a bit we can merge that down and then we can go ahead and start messing with with some of the final colors maybe add a couple darker spots maybe darker in general looks better and maybe we'll grab darker of this as well we'll kind of just see how that looks we can also change the color of these as well some sort of gray boxes as well grab a highlight of that it's kind of a pinky maybe they don't fit in too well so let's kind of mess with that pink a little bit maybe we'll we'll bring this blue up you can see how that looks kind of tie in the blue a bit more grab one more shade of it and that looks a bit better so i think we can make this up here kind of stand out a bit better and maybe down here as well see if we can add kind of a plate get colors for that maybe add some bolts on it it looks like a little kind of bolt thing maybe we'll add a kind of little lookout window here we'll grab some sort of blue kind of bring this maybe we'll get light blue here and i like to follow these lines up here so if there's two there, there's two here two there oops two there come down then we can go ahead maybe we'll make that a bit darker since it stands out a bit too much even darker i think and then to make it look like a window we can grab a lighter version and kind of just go Cross it like that we don't have much play but it looks like something that's a little detail maybe we'll add some highlights to these wires here and these ones as well so I'm liking the side I think we can 
spruce up this shade thing right here. Let's go ahead and do that. Maybe it looks cool like one of these are if they're different colors and maybe these are a bit worn out in areas. Perhaps we'll go a bit darker, especially where right underneath that looks a bit better. And then maybe we'll we'll hit control U since it's on its own layer. And let's just kind of see if we can get a better color, perhaps even. Maybe the orange wasn't what almost like that red a little bit. Turn down the saturation a little and even the color. And that looks even cooler, I think. I like the mix of the blue, the rusty red and orange. I like that as well as the grays. And maybe that that original orange will come out just in little areas. Looks pretty good. And I like that. Let's kind of do the same thing with these. Kind of figure out a color, maybe more more blue, more around these, but maybe uh, a bit more saturated, closer to gray. Let's do up here. Let's see how this, this, oops. Let's make sure we're on the right layer. Adding the blue to the top, I like that. A bit darker. I do like that, so let's get some color shades of that. And I think we might be able to get all of those. Do these blues as well. And that kind of brings it all together a bit more. We'll add this since they kind of stand out a bit too much. Maybe we'll try to get a turn off contiguous. Maybe we'll just do a couple of them. We'll add it to these. Oh, that's, that's the same color there. Let's fill in these colors. Now it's a little bit of just kind of messing around with the, the colors, the final details, and just making sure everything's perfect. Let's add some shading under these wires. Maybe that adds a little more to this area. Maybe we can try something cool, add a new layer, and we'll do a pretty bright blue. And maybe it's a sign. Maybe this is a place to get supplies, medical supplies, perhaps. So there's a kind of a hospital cross thing medic sign which looks pretty cool we can duplicate this and the layer above let's switch it to addition and see how it looks it makes it more white let's see if we bring it down a bit this makes it a bit more kind of like the the original blue so let's just leave it like this this will be the sign looks pretty cool and some additional details you could do is add kind of like a satellite dish in here perhaps like so it will add some outline to it so it doesn't look too out of place we can add another kind of antenna there we can add a plate or some sort over here as well let's do that one two two one two go down go like there and then we can get maybe it's a little lighter and let's do it a little darker and we'll get a couple bolts and that looks pretty good. We can add some kind of maybe rust happening or something happening here. We can add that everywhere if we want. We'll just grab some darker shades of it. And these are kind of just the finishing touches to this little piece. Maybe too much. Perhaps if we just highlight these and kind of just shade the corners. Oh, I had stabilizer on, so that's why it felt weird. And that looks pretty cool. We can grab this blue up here and kind of maybe some door handles here maybe there's an animated sign or something kind of like that tint for these adds just kind of just brings all those little colors together maybe we can grab this yellow and do an even brighter one now let's grab it and use color picker and it was on the details so we'll jump there we'll just kind of make those a couple different colors and I think we're really, really this thing to life. And it's kind of just like nitpicking little details and, and adding little details here and there. Like we can always make the roof a bit better, adding little kind of shades there. You can highlight these as well, take that color, and then kind of add some, some rough parts there. We can go to this sun sheet shade and kind of add a bit more rougher colors well, let's add one more, maybe one more kind of antenna, just so we really know it's sci-fi. Maybe this one has yellow kind of beeper on it, and that looks pretty cool. And then if you want, you can start adding vegetation depending on the, the state of this. And I think this is the grass of, this is kind of like the grass I use in Stranded. 
can always check over here. Kind of this color and that color. Okay, kind of close. This is the grass I use. And the Stranded series is kind of like a dystopian, dystopian kind of post-apocalypse type feel. So this, this kind of fits in real good. You can go to that shadow and use the shadow, kind of make shadows for little little grass blades like so and you can always then copy and paste these grass blades a bit, a bit more maybe the shadows stand out a little too much i think i did them lighter in this one yeah a bit lighter but we can go ahead and copy and paste this grass and kind of place it as fitting let's move the shadow layer above it so this grass here is darker and then we just need to delete the ones that overlap with the grass pieces that doesn't look weird and then we can paste some more back here make sure you're on the vegetation layer maybe spin it a bit and then you know is that a bigger kind of one maybe right out in front here perhaps not and then if you want to go even further with vegetation say this shop is really booming it's got some vegetation life you can go ahead and add some leaves everywhere i kind of generally just use the same shape kind of four by four square and kind of stack them and then sometimes I add the odd bigger one and then we can add kind of highlight to those and then we'll just want to delete the shadow parts wherever they may be so it doesn't look like they overlap awkwardly and you can connect them with a branch kind of a brown if you want they look fine just kind of chill them as is but if you want it to look more like a viney kind of connected vegetation do that and you can just kind of keep going it depends how vegetated you want it to be you can copy and paste some kind of add it everywhere perhaps it's going under this you can move them as you see fit and now you have this little sci-fi little isometric hut and it's pretty cute let's let's keep this all green and turn the grass into it and we'll add some kind of more subtle shadows to these since they're just little tiny grass blade blades like so so if you've been with me this far i hope you learned a few things on creating this cute little sci-fi hut and if you support me on socials patreon watching on youtube in any way i thank you so much and i appreciate your time thank you see you next time